How's life y'all? Today we have the new lightweight ice cold APL 35 with us. I apologize for all the mess. I'm about to go on a trail tomorrow. So getting this out there so you can all see it. Today's sponsor is from Rogue Protection Group. They provide the highest level of professional defensive firearm training and security consultation. They have concealed carry to VIP protection training courses. Rogue Protection Group partners with Jefferson State Four Wheel Drive Association. And they are a great community that goes out into the fields and does trail maintenance and trail cleanup. We're going to offer a basic carbine class which is on September 28th in Southern Oregon near Grants Pass. If you comment on this video and subscribe, I'll go through it with a random generator and pick the winner and contact you via message. We're going to put the APL 35 all aluminum dual zone refrigerator and compare with my personal JP50 fridge that I've had for about three years now. You can currently get the uh, APL 35 on Indigo through Iceco on sale for roughly $509. Um, I know the early bird special goes up to $599. This refrigerator retails for $708, I believe. So comparing the two, the APL 35 specs, it's an all aluminum case. It, it's, it's really nice. The um, edges of it kind of reminds me of like a Ramoa suitcase case so that way if it, you were to bump into anything on the edges and it, it takes the blunt force it's not going to get damaged as easily that being said it is all aluminum so it can get scratched um, and the other thing is it's not magnetic because of the fact that it is all aluminum it's a dual zone 27 liter to 8 liter you can set the zones for freezing on the bigger one or the smaller one vice versa or the smaller one the bigger for the test we're going to put the bigger side to fit the refrigerator side and on the smaller side it's going to be for the freezer uh, one of the things that i really like about this fridge is it's bluetooth capable so being able to look at my phone and see the temps and set the temps has been kind of a game changer the fridge goes down to negative 4 degrees fahrenheit negative 20 degrees Celsius. I don't think I'd ever go lower than that personally. I, I normally sit my freezer at about 20 degrees give or take uh, but for the testing we're gonna do 37 degrees for the fridge and zero degrees for the freezer. It's got these spring-loaded handles uh, which are very nice on the fridge itself. Gives you a good grasp of the fridge and it, when you let go it actually folds right back up to keep a smaller profile. The JP50 also has something like that, but it's not a spring-loaded metal. It's got a plastic, uh, but it's also spring-loaded. It, it does close itself as well. It's got scissor hinges, and the benefit with it is that when you're closing the actual fridge itself, if you're higher than 45 degrees, it won't self-close on you. It'll actually stay there. So for people that wanna keep the fridge door open uh, and it's not fully extended, it'll be able to stay open, easy access, and you won't accidentally hit your head if it falls. I've done that with my JP50, where when it's not fully extended, if I put it and I let go, it will fall back down and I have hit myself in the head before and it's not something that you would enjoy doing out on the trails. It's got two latches when you close the fridge itself, which I understand to keep the seal, it's a great thing. I do like my JP50 hinge better where I can just pop it up and keep it open. It's just easier to access when you open and close it. The two metal hinges can get tiresome if you're going in and out of the fridge like I do when I'm cooking. So that's something that I probably would change personally. The other thing is I do like when the fridge actually opens from one side on the smaller edge where the APL35 the hinges are on the side and with my drawer slide that I have on my original refrigerator it's just easier when it falls down and I can just kind of pick it up versus on the side I would have to orient it a, a different way to be easier access for me if I were to use that fridge as my personal fridge now one of the cool things about the fridge is it's all aluminum inside outside the bottom the only part that's not aluminum is that LED screen and where you're putting in your actual plugs itself the great thing about this fridge is that the plugs themselves are more heavy duty as far as them sticking in and staying in so when you're on rougher terrain it won't accidentally pop out that goes 
for the cigarette side plug as well versus the JP50. That cigarette plug doesn't really sit in that well. So when I do have it plugged in, if I'm bouncing around, that thing has come out on the trails. I don't have to worry about that anymore because I have a different battery setup, but it's just nice that they gave that piece. Now you can actually take that piece and put it in the other one or purchase it separately to upgrade your other Isco fridges. So if you haven't done that, I would probably recommend just doing that alone to get that tight fit. Ice cold listen to everybody as far as cleaning your fridges out. Having that drain plug on the bottom is a game changer. If you look at my JP50, it's pretty disgusting. I did clean it again, but there's just, just the bottom gets caked with stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, but being able to pull that drain plug and get the water out, or if you put ice in it for any reason, you can also drain it out without having to lift it up. So that's, that's a big thing. It's got dual internal lights that are white. So it depends on your, your look. My JP50 has a blue light. I actually like the blue light more. It's easier to see at night and it doesn't mess with your night vision versus the white light if it is bright and you get that glare, it's gonna be hard to adjust to the darkness. The APL35 weighs 32 pounds versus the JP50 that weighs 37 pounds. So it's a five pound difference. It's not much if you think five pounds is a big difference once you load everything into the fridge it's minimal if you're really gonna complain about five pounds go to the gym they both came with a five-year compressor warranty and a one-year um, manufacturer warranty on everything else they both have the same compressor uh, so you, you really can't complain either or I'm very happy with my JP 50 it works for me 50 liters is about the great amount of storage when it's for me and my family when we're going out to cook the amount of food that's going in there. Using the APL 35, I would add, either have to cut back what I'm cooking, so I'd, so I'd go to Costco and buy Kevin's um, that's already pre-made and just heat it up so I can save on storage space, or really pre-pack stuff and make easier meals that use less ingredients because it's just it just doesn't fit everything inside the fridge uh, to work. I tested it out at the Overland Rally, and I mean, we were only there for three days, but it was filled to the brim. It was very hard to put our drinks inside. It was mainly just food. Comparison between the two, you're gonna have an all aluminum interior and exterior versus a ABS plastic interior and exterior. It's a single zone versus a dual zone. The JP50 kind of has this little nook that you can put stuff in, but realistically, I just put drinks in there and it never really gets too cold. So for the testing on the APL35, we put the settings at 37 degrees on the fridge side and zero degrees on the freezer side. For the JP50, I always keep it at 32 degrees. So we're gonna keep it at 32 degrees uh, for this test. I know it's a little bit off, but we're gonna get as close as possible with the timing okay first test with the APL 35 it took longer than normal since I personally didn't know that the fridge wasn't calibrated the reason why it wasn't calibrated was this particular fridge was ice cold showroom piece they had none on the market at the time I was lucky enough for them to send it to me personally so that way we could raffle and have a display piece for the Northwest Overland rallies uh, you're seeing other youtubers now post it because they've sent it to the the youtubers and influencers to go over the fridge itself but this particular piece was their only show piece that I was I've had for like three or four weeks now that being said huge drought people are so interested in it when they actually got to see feel and see how it worked at the Northwest Overland rallies and they're all ecstatic especially our winner he was just like blown away and I will tell you right now he's probably the luckiest person that I've met and I joke around asking him for lottery numbers just because of the fact that he said that he won a bumper and like a tent and he wins all of these rallies all the time he goes to different places i think he won his uh f-250 or f-150 also which that's mind-blowing so the fridge wasn't calibrated and i was sitting there and i was in the test for about an hour and the temperature just wasn't going down and then i noticed it was off by 10 degrees on the freezer side and the refrigerator side so i reached out back to high school and i was talking to lou which is their head tech and he walked me through how to recalibrate it and so basically we we're talking on the phone and discussing the next day knowing that i had to re-record to get the actual numbers and the the accurate results he was fantastic Isco has great customer service. Lou walked me through it very simply in a timely manner. We got everything calibrated, good to go. So we ran the second test and as you can see at 15 minutes, the temperature inside shows 51 degrees and 50 degrees. 
but the system itself shows 37 degrees and 36 degrees is what the system is showing. Now, every refrigerator and freezer on the market is gonna show something because what's happening is they're actually rating it at the bottom level of the fridge freezer itself and not the actual center of the refrigerator and that's what we're actually testing for. At 23 minutes and 58 seconds, the compressor completely shut off and it basically stated that it was 37 and zero on the LCD panel. That being said, the actual measurements from the center of the fridge and freezer were 38 and 29 which is great you got refrigerator and freezing temps at that time so 23 minutes and 58 seconds is when it actually hit those marks ice cold claims that it's 15 minutes i think their timing is a bit off but 23 minutes is by far acceptable so we're good with that when i use a thermometer gun on the bottom of the ice cold freezer side it showed nine degrees and then the other one was 29 comparing the jp50 fridge at 22 minutes and 50 seconds which is exact time when we shut off the other ice cold it was 44 degrees so as you can see the apl35 actually cools a lot faster than the jp50 at 32 minutes it dropped to 32 degrees which was the temperature that was set at. so it took about 10 minutes longer for it to hit the temperature that it was set at. Now we're testing power consumption because that's a big thing with people as far as how much power your refrigerators consume based off of what type of battery setup you have with EcoFlows to solar. Power consumption on the APL35 is anywhere from 22 to 30 watts on Eco. The JP50 runs 40 to 51 watts. So on average, you're about 10, you're about 10 to 20 watt difference, which can make a big difference on how long your batteries actually last, especially if you're using like an EcoFlow or a Jackery and you need that power to last as long as possible. The sound from the compressor and the decibel readings going when it's on max and full blown. This one, the averages are about the same. The JP50 is actually quieter at 50 decibels, 49 to 50 versus the APL35 was actually a bit higher at 55 on average. So some of the pros for the APL35, it's super light. It's actually the lightest refrigerator freezer out on the market right now. At 32 pounds, you, you can't go wrong. You can really pick it up and just walk around with it. Now you are giving up that storage space to be able to have something lighter. They claim that the the freezing temp can be brought from regular temperature down in, to freezing in 15 minutes. During my testing, it was more towards 23 minutes. That's still pro because of the fact that it can get to that temperature very quickly. It's about 80 degrees right now. And for it being able to go from 80 to freezing that quickly, that's a pro in my book. Another thing is that it's very quiet. Both of my fridges, the JP50 and the APL35 are quiet by itself. So you can't complain. Even when the fridge is going on, even at 50 decibels, when you're next to it, it's very hard to tell that it's actually on. You really gotta like listen in on it, especially if you're outdoors. And then the final pro, pro for the fridge itself is that the hinges at 45 degrees or higher will actually stay so you won't hit your face like me. So that's a, that's a good thing. Some of the cons with the APL35, the display is really hard to see just because it's down on the bottom and towards the back. So it's really hard to tell if you have your fridge mounted how I normally do to be able to see what the temperatures are, but you can use Bluetooth to look on your phone. So it, it, you know there is a give and take with that. Uh, with the JP50, it's right on the top, which is easy when I pull it out and it slides down because it kind of angles down at 45 degrees, so it's easy to see what the temperature reading is on that particularly. Another thing is it can't run off of solar, and so you need power from your car or power station like an EcoFloor Jackery or power from your vehicle itself to run this fridge. It also doesn't have an exterior battery like some other brands out there now. I know the EcoFlow has an exterior battery that you can use. Another thing that I noticed while using it, I was very gentle with the fridge while I was using it. We didn't do any crazy terrain driving just because of the fact that I went to the Northwest Overland Rally, so it was all pavement driving. Um, so yeah, I was a pavement princess that time. But the fact is that when I opened the fridge to empty everything out, and nothing was really thrown in either. Everything was placed very gently. There there's like two or three dents on the bottom that, you know, with aluminum, you're gonna have that happen. So if that's gonna kind of bother you, it's not really the way you should go. 
Uh, just so if you get upset with it being dented like that, you have to be extremely gentle. Or the JP50, I mean, it's plastic, it's ABS plastic. So yeah, it can crack, but it hasn't dented or anything or cracked with me just using it with even heavy off-road uses. So is the APL35 for you? It really depends. If you want something for a weekender or you're a solo traveler that you just want to put drinks in and some food and short trips, yes, it's a great fridge to have. It looks beautiful. If you have a bigger family and you need to be able to cook multiple meals, you want to hold that extra storage. It's probably not the fridge to get just because of the fact that you need something bigger. Now, if they made an APL 50 fridge, that would be a different thing and that's something that I would personally would get just because of the fact that I do like the design it looks very nice it insulates fantastically it's just the size isn't there so for me I wouldn't personally buy it but you never know they might make a bigger version and that's something that I would actually go for Iceco is a fantastic brand. I have nothing but good things to say about their brand, their customer service, and I've been a loyal Iceco purchaser for many years. Uh, I haven't had a Iceco purchase that I've bought that has gone wrong. Compressors always lasted, mine, mine is still running. I've only bought two products from them, so I don't have a ton of Iceco purchases to relay off of, but I know others that run their fridges as well. And whenever anybody asks me, what fridge they should purchase when they are in the market. If they're going from cooler to fridge, I always recommend two brands, which is gonna be Iceco and Dometic. That's just the two that I say. Dometic is more expensive. Iceco is actually more affordable when you go from price point. So I usually recommend Iceco first beforehand because at the end of the day, a fridge is a fridge and why not get the best bang for your buck?